Hello and welcome to the uh, round 8 of the RF1 Racing Lead. We are here with PC Division 2 at the beautiful Silverstone Circuit. 5.8 kilometers, about 18 corners, two DRS zones, and a wonderful overtake take opportunity into Stowe. Standing Here's a lap around the hot Silverstone, lap. you want to stay on the left hand side so you can have a really nice cut into turn 1. For turn 2, you want to stay as close to the left as possible. For turn 3, you want to uh, start braking as soon as the curb starts. Really glide through that corner, come out wide for turn four, um, then just hit the apex, get on the throttle very early. For turn five, just cut the inside right here, open up the DRS for the next corner, turn six, you want to get on the curb on the right, break on the 50 board, get down to fourth, really go deep into turn seven, so you can have a really nice exit out of there. Again, get on the throttle as soon as possible. For turn eight, you want to kind of cut it a bit, so you have a less of a distance to travel for cops. You want to turn it earlier as the racing line suggests. Now we're coming to maggots and packets, a very technical part of the track. You want to clip that left curb, then that right curb. Use engine braking for the last part of packets and then have a really, really good exit out of chapel. The good exit out of chapel really sets you up for good overtake into stow or even before stow with the DRS and the high ERS usage coming into stow. Brake is on the midway point of that curb on the left hand side. Stamp on the throttle very early. Coming down to Veil, break as soon as the curb starts on the right hand side, keep it on fourth. Try to go for late apex on the exit of the chicane and then just stamp on the front and that's basically a lap of Silverstone. The time last lap was at 1 Thank you, Fraser, for that talk through the hot lap of Silverstone. It's a really beautiful circuit. As you can see now, we have some cars out on track for their outlaps, and I am joined by Jock James. How are you doing, Jock? Oh, I'm doing great. Good evening. Good evening. Definitely not a, a sort of panic start to the stream at all. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, as you can see, um, do have cars out on track. I will just get a track map open. We'll see every car going around the circuit and it appears that Cruiser Genes is going to be the one of the first to start a hot lap here. Yeah, right through a yellow sector. Yeah, yellow sectors don't tend to matter very much in this though, do they? You know, we can all... As Mill has already retired from the session, it appears that Mill has gone off track on the pit exit in some way. I'm not sure whether that is due to an incident of some kind, whether there's some lag involved, I'll have to see what's going on there. That is very concerning for our race winner last time out at Singapore. Yeah. Roshido is out with no front wing left on his car. Roshido, a McLaren, is that the McLaren just heading onto the Wellington Strait now? Yes, that's him. Yeah, oh, so it's a little long way to go back to the pit as we see this team at Cruiser Genes flow through Beckett and on the Handa straight. This is a lovely op overtaking opportunity in the race because if you can get a good run out of Beckett's, you have a long run in a DRS zone into Stowe, and if you can make the move stick, it takes a lot of bravery to fight around that corner. But here we go, Cruiser Genes going across to the line. See if we can. But Martin has gone for a 27.4. Cruiser Genes sets the mark at 25.3 around this track. That is a very tidy bank of lap around this circuit. That's a really strong first lap by him. Yeah, it's, it's um, what, just under a tenth faster than my best ever time trial lap. <laughs> and that's set on a bank without the track evolution that we expect to see in this session. So... Yeah, that's definitely an exciting start. Nordi, who led a significant portion of the Singapore race, finds himself currently in P2, the 125.7, but obviously we are very early in this session, so we'll have to see what everyone else can bring out from here. Do you see any interesting hot laps going on? It looks like we have... Turbo is on one, and he's Turbo. just about to... Oh, coming to Vale. Cross the line. Let's see what this Red Bull can do here. 
across the line, and it is P3, a 26-1. And that, that is a very solid time to set as a band clap in Div 2, as I'm having a little bit of trouble with our Halo display here. Try and have that battle pursuit as possible. Both um, racing points have set times. That's, uh, although Donald's time is not necessarily a time people are hoping to rest on for the rest of qualifying. That is <laughs> not competitive. He, he can do better. I drove against him today a couple of, uh, of races and he can definitely do better. Yeah, I mean, he's been dropped. It is a debut, I believe. But yes, if, it is. It is, yeah. If you're dropped into Div 2, it shows that you do have a decent amount of pace. You're not just know doing nothing out there and I maybe he's nervous yet <laughs> it's possible Look, just give me a second to find it my stream all up and running there's a with technical problems today it's unfortunate um as it appears that everyone is in the pits with the exception of possibly weltering yeah weltering I guess that is whole hot lap should be his hot lap yeah it could be as we round final corners well, trying not to fall as early as possible here, but you can spin if you go too much. Weltering also managed to drop into the 125 to go to P3. Even faster than Turbo. Yeah, in the sister team of Red Bull. Now, I've told, it's not it's not so much of a rivalry in this league. There's not really a direct match between the teams. It's <laughs> always always good to see the storylines. Um, are Aralak and Donald on flying laps? Can you see? Aralak has invalidated by the things. Been a little bit shaky through Mats and Beckett's. Maybe to try and warm the tyres for a second hot lap? Possible. Maybe. I think Donald, uh, Donald was about to, to set two hot laps, one after another. And we have not a spy oh. going into his hot lap now. Yeah, in fact, Donald on board with not a spy. But Donald, of course, had the 132 and has now moved right into the pack, so it's definitely an improved second lap. I think you're right that. Similar to what him. we saw at Portum out early today. You see drivers backing off on the first half if it's not going so well, and just taking that extra time to warm the tyres, get them in optimal condition for a flying lap. But of course, that will take life out of your tyres, and although yes. the one stop around this track isn't too difficult, it is still something that will be playing on our drivers' minds, that every single additional push that you put on these tyres could end up costing you in the race because top 10 drivers in qualifying they will have to start on these tires and we're not a spy rounds cops heads into madison beckett's possibly one of the most famous parts of this historic circuit where the first f ever formula one world championship race was held back in 1970 70 years ago and coming down the hander straight not a spy. And one of the pieces of track that was here in the very first configuration, more of a an oval back then. Now it's a lot more interesting as we head into a hard breaking zone of veil. And around the final two corners, not a spy, very quick driver. Let's see what he can get here. Charlie is a 125.3, and he gets a 125.3, but it is one hundredth of a second off the McLaren of Cruzo. So for the time being, not if I will have to settle in to the second spot on the grid. But still, what a fantastic opening lap from Not Spy there. Yeah, it will be a tough battle for for pole position here. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if by the end of the session we managed to drop into the into the 124s. Let's see, not under one dream crosses the line. And the keyboard warrior knows P6 with a 26-3. But like we now only have four cars that have yet to set a time. The Alpha Tower of Tori. And the McLaren of Rochado, who had lost a win early on in the session. Who actually, Rochado has gone seventh fastest. 26.5. We'll see if Rory, who is currently flying through Madison Beckett's. Looks like this is this is on a lap. As we head down, board stone. Got to be careful on track limits around this corner because 
touch the outside, it'll gain you time, and the game will invalidate the lap for you. And Tori has gone seventh fastest with a 26.5, displacing McLaren. So now we have two Alpha Tauris in the top seven of the grid. Good for them. Yeah, very good. Very good performance so far. And we will hop on board with Turbo Swerve, who I believe is yeah, just rounding the final corner of this lap. Green through yeah, the first two sectors. Supposed to be valid as we cross the line. And it is an improvement. Just by a couple of tenths, but it does jump him above the Alpha Tower of Weltering. Again. Yeah, but who just went on the hot lap right now? Well, let's, let's, so maybe he's about to strike let's back. see what Weltering's response can be then. We come through the loop and on to the Wellington straight. You have to be so careful with the throttle to not spin it here. Weltering takes that well. See what he's got through the first sector. It is purple. Two tenths up. And Weltering possibly looking towards pole position here as we round. I've forgotten the name, or how have I forgotten that name? We're coming to, <laughs> we're coming to Cops now, I know that one. I, I do know the names, I'd always ruin it, which is you can just tap the gravel on the outside and it sends you around. Now, Myers and Beckett, it's impossible to forget that name. And the exit through Chapel and onto the Hander straight, you want to carry as much speed as possible, especially on a qualifying lap. Now into Stowe. It was green through the second sector. Let's see if it can be an improvement to strike back against Turbo Swerve. Ripped him not a minute earlier. Here he comes. Oh, that will be a close one. Oh, almost got an but it's oh, on 125.1. What a fantastic lap from Welter in there, going on provisional pole position. And that's a time hard to beat. It certainly is. Uh, I'm we, we could dip into the 124s by the end of this session, but I would not be surprised if that time does hold us pole position. Let's see. If Aralat can get in the fray. And I remember what it's called, it's Luffield. From around Luffield. <laughs> <laughs> now onto the, the old start finish straight. So of course coming into Cops and Madison Beckett's. The, the old layout was a fantastic track, but I do love the loop they've added. Uh, and I like has actually backed off by look of things. I'm going to show for a second flying lap, and is that Opsin ahead? No, it is Donald. We'll see what Donald can do flying past Aralat there. Madison Beckett's it is actually an invalidation. So, not very much luck for either of those drivers to back. Let's go back to Opsin sister racing point who actually did not improve through the first sector is there an improvement second sector we'll see Mads but it needs to be perfect you notice he's down that doesn't look particularly clean and yep he is definitely aborted that lap meanwhile I am having actual problems bear with me if I can get that Apologies. Yeah, we have Felix, Felix, who's the only one who hasn't set a time yet on his hot lap. He's on board. P14 for him. That's an improvement. That is jumping the Williams of Martin. Let's see what can happen there.
and I thought he might hit a second hot lap right after, but it doesn't seem like it. And I don't I don't think he has time to, to do another out lap again. Yeah, I think it's unlikely. Um Will Hornwood with Otter Spy, who is currently coming through the first sector at quite decent pace, has gone green, currently 3 one hundredths away from the pole time of Weltering. Definitely competitive, and with the try to prove it, it's spent quite a lot, lots of gravel kicked up in front. But that car has backed off, it is the Alphatari of Tori. Not trying to play sneaky to help his teammate be unfair getting out of the way. <laughs> and letting not spy fly through Madison Beckett's. It's going towards the second sector line. What is it? It is not an improvement from his previous lap by Lugton, but it is up on all time of weltering. So as long as this third sector stays clean, this could be competition for position. That is a very smooth final set of corners but across the line. Let's see what it is. It is a 24-9. We have dropped into the 124s and the Mercedes yeah. of Not a Spy puts himself on provisional pole position. But we have Cruzo going right to the finish line trying to retake his pole position. Green through the first two sectors as the Around Vale and Club. Let's see what the McLaren can respond with. This might be the last chance. It will be a 125-0, which is for P2, but not quite enough for pole position. And we have Welty, who is just starting a flying lap, so if there is any significant track evolution, Welty should have the best of it in this final battle. Come to the first set to line, and it's two tenths down. Not a very good first set to Welty, we'll need to give it everything through the rest of this lap. To try and fight back again. Oh, he invalidated. One, two, and there we go. And Struggle as the chequered flag falls on the qualifying session, it seems that the top two may be decided, unless Nordy has anything to say about it. Nordy just managed to sneak over the line by a look of things. And so the Haas driver, who finished P4 last time out, are currently looking to start P4, but hoping to improve on that, I'm sure. As we come down the Wellington straight into Brooklands, Nordy has improved and is right on the back of Not Spy here. We round Luffield. Keeps it nicely nicely inside, not running into the gravel. And anyway. Cake sneaks himself on P6 with his last toddler. Certainly does, that's very impressive. It Going is from um, Sadie so far. As Nordy rounds through Madison Beckett and takes too much of that corner and invalidates. So Nordy will not find an improvement. Turbo Swerve behind managed to take the corner cleanly. Will he be able to jump the Haas on the final lap? Coming across the second set to line, it is green. It's four tenths down on Not Spy. But that looks set to put him into P4 above the Haas of Nordy. And that invalidation could end up costing him quite dearly come round to the final corners. Keeps it tidy and across the line in a little bit of the curb and it is good enough for P4. It is a 125.3 for the Red Bull of Turbo Swerve. And is Kate Bad going for one more push lap? No, that will round the session to a close. And it is the Mercedes of Not A Spy we managed to take pole position. With the McLaren of Cruzo running out the front row. And the Honda powered duo of Weltering and Turbo Swerve locking out the second row of the grid. Now, I mean, I'll, I'll just quickly check. Everyone in the top 10 elected to set their time on the soft compound tyre with the exception of one goal one dream 
whose yes. 163 has been set on the mediums. So if he can set alternate strategy, that will be helpful going into the race. Now, what are you expecting from strategy here, Jack James? Well, one stop, of course, I'm pretty sure. I would be surprised if anybody uh, chooses a two-stop strategy here. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the, this circuit is quite famous for being brutal on tyres in real life. You had the Bloods in 2013 and then the drama on the final laps yes. here this year. But of course, that does mean that you bring the three hardest compounds, C1, C2 and C3. And in the game, they really are resilient. So I, I expect it to be... Um, the two softer compounds here, soft and medium. Um, probably about a lap 10 pit stop for the soft runners and for the medium runners, which will be one goal, one dream, but possibly anyone outside the top 10 as well, because they will have a free choice of tyre. They'll probably want to run until about lap 15 and try and get an overcut on the field who might be stuck in slower running traffic. Of course, this does all assume that the race will be dry. Um, as a resident of the UK, I can tell you that it's not always dry. <laughs> I'll tell you that it does look a little bit cloudy right now, but I have heard on the weather forecast front that we are expecting a dry race throughout. And so... Well, Division 2 is used to, to uh, a wet race, thinking of Singapore last week. Yeah, of course. That was, <laughs> that was certainly an exciting race to roll the dice on. Of course, so some some tracks are do have rain more commonly. You know, of course, Britain is going to be quite common with it. But also tracks like Singapore do have a lot of it. And here we are rolling off on the formation lap. We'll see what everyone has elected for in terms of tire choice. Actually, most of the field has chosen to use the soft tires, even outside the top ten. We only have Tori and Jazzy Binman joining One Girl One Dream on the mediums. And I do find it interesting that of the three medium tyre runners, two are from the same team. So that will complicate the pit stop slightly, though we'll have to coordinate to make sure they don't have to double stack because the double stack really is brutal in this game. I'm really excited to see what Cruzo can do, oh, starting absolutely. from P2 on the inside, quite difficult on Silverstone if you ask me. Yeah, it, it can be a very difficult opening corner. Um, and as you can see from the forecast quickly scrolling your screen, it will be overcast throughout as is to be expected from the UK, but it will be dry. And so these cars will have to make do with the tyres they have until their pit window comes. I'm sure they don't mind that. Yeah, the, the opening corner going through Abbey, it's, it's taken flat out in the, you know, in, in the race. Even on sort of high fuel load and worn tyres, you are able to take it flat out. But of course, it's not that simple when you try to go two wide or possibly even three wide through the opening corner. Better lot caught out there in the race early on this year. Yes. You have to be very careful you're coming down the inside. Because if you are down the outside, you can take liberal track limits and take and you know take the slap on the wrist from the stewards there. But if you are further back, that is not what you'll be hoping for. I'm just the cars oh, line up. To start the race, I'm getting excited. Yeah, it's... Here we go. Lights are coming on. And here's lights out and Donald's had a jump start. And away we go. And it looks like Not Spy has managed to have a start. He's trying to hand it around the outside. Cruz James did look towards the inside, but he wasn't able to make it work. And so far it looks fairly clean. We've had a couple of positions moving. But and really oh, the Ferrari of Mill spit out, losing his entire front wing. Oh no, I mean Mill had an, had an incident during start of qualifying that ended the session very early, so that will 
just add insult to injury for the Ferrari there. As we look to the front of the field, it is not a spy who has held the lead. And the top three are actually in lockstep. The highest change that we have is that Nordi has taken that spot back from Turbo Swerve. The Turbo Swerve took it at the end of qualifying. There is a look to make a move coming through Cops. It's now looking into Matt's better though too wide. This is very brave. Not a spy. Let's manage to hold on Truzo. Slightly goes off track and spins. And he's able to hold on to it. Yes, he has, but he has lost a position too yeah, well. Great to save him. by him. Great save by him. Oh, absolutely. It's a great save. Um, oh. Cruz is go. about to retake his P3 and he managed to do so. Yeah, very impressive. Are you going to set on that place? Well, Twink, looking up, trying to make a move on, not a spy here. They are running very close. And so there's a yellow flag in set to one, and it is the racing point of Opsin who appears to have gone round and has dropped back a fair way. We have a couple of the runners already in the pits. Betis for the second time this race. Second of 26 times that I have to navigate this very fast complex. And Turbo Swerve has gone off and is out of the race, has crashed out of the exit of Maggots. And that is a virtual safety car that has been deployed to neutralize the opening of this race. Used to be by 40%, typically DRS would be disabled, but of course don't have any DRS until the start of lap 3, so for the time being, there's no change on that front. When we get back going again, we will have DRS assistance coming down the Wellington and Handa Straits, and we do go green as the leaders cross the line. Not as buying Weltering, battling it out, trying to get the jump on the Delta. They hold position, though. We have two people, Donald and Felix, who both uh, de decided to pit under the BSC. Yeah, um, definitely an interesting choice. I mean, you'd expect if it was a planned stop that they'd gone to hard. It seems they've gone to mediums, which means that they're not expected to go to the end of the race. And it may have just been due to a, a lack of carbon fiber. Um, so far, Mill, the only one on hearts, trying to uh, go for the entire race. Yeah, I mean, of course, after, after that incident on the first half, not by has gone round. Welchwind almost collecting him there, but not a spy who was leading this race has spun coming through Carps and is just fallen back into the field. Looks like the front wing is intact, but that will be. Weltering lost. Weltering lost a lot of front wing. Disaster did Weltering lose front wing there. Yeah, trying his to evade. Right, right is gone. Uh, and <laughs> the perils of not enabling ghosting. Show again, and Welchwind has had to dive into the pits. For the fresh front wing. And with that, Cruiser Genesis inherits the lead from nowhere. Qualified P3, but not gaining on the cars ahead. And has now just been gifted the lead of this race. And Welchwind elects to be the second car out on hard compound tyres. And of course, they are the C1, so they are very slow, but they will make it to the end of this race. And there is a bit of a recovery drive that needs to happen here for Weltering. A yellow flag through set to one. And it seems that it may be one of the cars leaving the... No, it's... Yeah, it's the car of Opsin. Heard that. Oh, I just got, I just, uh, I just got informed that Donald tried to uh, get a drive-through penalty from his jump start gun. But they pitted him. <laughs> it didn't work out for him. Oh no! That is 
That's a disaster, so he's going to have to stop again. Was it due to damage on the front wing? The... No, 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 he just he just wanted in for the for the drive through and they, went, they gave him medium. He didn't even want it that, so... Oh, a horrible that, start for him. That is, that is... That is definitely not what he would have wanted. But the, the battle at the front has changed complexion completely, and not a spy is off! Coming through Chapel, and his race goes from bad to worse, and now that is front wing damage for the Mercedes that was on pole position here. First a spin, and now front wing damage. And we have VTech in chat who's saying that it was an attempt from Donald to serve the drive through under VSC, which is not allowed under the F1 regulations, and not a spy has to pull into the pits here. That possibly could be his race near to over. Seems like it, yeah. Could be. Let's see what he can bring up on the last 19 laps. While Knorri is working his way closer and closer to Cruzo. It seems like Cruzo manages to bring more time to him between him and Nordy, get him out of his DRS zone. So far, Weltering also down on P10 after his pit stop, after his incident with Not a Spy. He was on P15 now, and he moved on hearts, so tries to go for the entire distance.
and apologies there. I had a bit, a bit of sound problems for a little bit. I seem to be back. There we go. Th thank you for acknowledging that shot. No worries. It was so silent here and I felt alone, so I was. Yeah, I'm sorry for that. Um, no worries. Meanwhile, Nordy has just remained in you know, about a second back here. Yeah, and they're making some space between the first two and Cakebag, who's sitting on P3 right now. Oh, absolutely. I mean, they really have checked out the front here. They're expecting a little bit of traffic with Not a Spy and Weltering. And of course, Turbosworth was in the mix in the top five as well, but those have all fallen back now. And so these are the two fastest runners from qualifying, still surviving this battle of attrition. And as they round this corner for the eighth time, they're really starting to settle into this race. And they have to start thinking about pit stops because, of course, they're on our line strategies, both on soft compound tyres, likely to be wanting to change onto the mediums within the next few laps. And will these cars be thinking about an undercut? Will Nordy be trying to use that to overtake? Will Cruzo try to cover that to make sure it doesn't happen? Wait and see. But the undercut isn't particularly powerful here. Lap time stay fairly constant throughout the race because they're very hard tyres, don't wear very much. And as the fuel burns off, you gain that pace back. But maybe worth an attempt as Nordi has actually fallen out of the DRS of Cruzo here. Just so close between these two on the front. It really is. I mean, Nordi will be trying to use as much fuel as possible and ERS to try and close this gap up. But will it be enough? He's running quite low on ERS right now. If we go on board with Cruzo, the same is true. So they've definitely been fighting tooth and nail and are running out of resources. And Nordi has gained here and is gaining still through Madison Beckett's by a look of things. Now eight tenths away as we hit the DRS activation. The rear wind slams open, reducing downforce around this track and giving as much pace as possible down the hand of straight, but it will not be enough. And as we reach the end of lap 9, either car lets go into the pits, but I would not be surprised if some of the soft runners do choose to make that call. I see Vashado has fresh mediums on. Was that for a change of front wind, or was that a call for an undercut from the Clarin. So far I'm impressed by uh, Tori and the Alpha Tori started P11. On crew though with a 3 second time penalty for multiple warnings. That is impressive on Tori. Of course, it's been a very chaotic race so far, and if you just keep your head, you can hold position, especially because Tori would have, would have been hoping to make many overtakes in the early stages of this race. Being on the harder compound tyre, just trying to keep sensible, keep the tyres working, and hopefully go for an, under, for an overcut once everyone else pits by yourself in clean air. And that strategy seems to be working beautifully so far. Meanwhile, the leading pair reached the hand of straight once again and on lap 10 you have to be thinking whether these cars are considering pulling into the pits here. Will either of them blink? Crew those going in. And in fact they and both Nordy. pull into the pits. Right behind him, yeah. And Nordy has picked up a 5 second penalty for speeding in oh, the pit lane. That hurts so much in this battle. That really does. I think he just tried to get as close as possible to hopefully get a jump in the pits. There's a lot of pressure on the McLaren pit crew. If they can get the car out ahead of Haas. And in fact, if there is traffic in the pit lane, that could be disaster. But it seems that Guzu has held the position through the pits and the pair will be able to go racing once again. And then as Cruiser comes out, right next to Jazzy Binman on the older medium tyres, cannot make the move stick. He was hoping to make the move stick to get a car in between himself and Nordi, looking to do it through the loop, 
gets a little bit squeezed as DRS down this straight with fresher tires. Actually, does not have DRS, which is just about the pits. Nice to go up the inside of Jazzy Binman coming into Brooklyn's and manages it. Good job for him. And he has Good. found that one car buffer. Now, Nordy has to try and answer back and get past Jazzy Binman as soon as possible to set his sights back on Cruzo. Flies up the outside coming into Corps. And it looks like that is a fairly clean overtake on the fresher tyres. Yeah, it doesn't seem like Jesse was trying to fight him there. Oh no, absolutely not. They're, they're fighting different races here. And she'll battle in with another car. It's just... Uh, Kick back. Speeding coming into the pit lane, smashing the... Uh, the pit lane sign on the right side. And I hope he didn't smash his front wing coming into the pits. Oh, that really would be unfortunate. Um, and of course, hopefully everyone remembers the speed limit now. Because it's 60 kilometers an hour at this track, it is a very slow pit lane. It can catch some drivers out. And now with the sign that Kate Bad has demolished. <laughs> the drivers have to keep that in mind. As Kate Bad all comes as we pass Kate Bad in the pits. There is absolutely no sign of an overcut there. As Weltrin has set the fastest lap of this race on hard compound tires. <laughs> And seven lap hard. old hard yes. so that that is an impressive performance it shows that Weltering is still fighting for this race and wants as much as possible from it we have Opsin the last one still out on soft tires after 11 laps the racing point currently in P3 yeah and in fact this pair currently in the net base lead are about to come up to the back of the racing point and so I'll be hoping that the race point does pair at the end of this lap and doesn't hold them up even more because that could be... That, that could really bunch the cars up behind. Doesn't happen. Cruiser was not close to four DRS there. If Opsin does elect to pull into the pits, you'd have to expect it after 12 laps of this race. Yes, he's going And there in. it is. And he managed to do it even without a pit limiter sign. Very impressive. Not breaking the speed limit. Good on him. Yeah, absolutely. And so now, the only three cars still out on track on their starting tyres are the three me starters of Trubby Wondol and Jazzy Binman. Currently P1, P2 and P5, although of course we won't know how their strategy is played out until after they make their stops onto the soft compound tyre. You'd have to expect it to be the softs if they reach this point of the race and not yes. the spots for hearts. And Nordy with the fastest first sector. He's giving Cruiser a hard time. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Cruiser has had clean air for pretty much his entire race, but Nordy has managed to stay on the battery, obviously with the assistance, but also with the dirty air that that McLaren will be kicking up through the very high-speed corners like Madison Beckett's. You have to be so careful to make sure that you hold on to it. But he's doing it very well and he's even gaining through those corners. The latch onto the back of that cloud. And we could see this battle go to the very end of the race. Yeah, both their ERS are is completely dry, so... Which is surprising because, you know, in the process of going through the pits, you do gain about 30% on your battery just in that slow running and so they really have been fighting hard in these opening laps of the stint to yeah. use that energy up straight away. Meanwhile as we look, look to the wider portion of this field we can see that all three of our medium compound runners who started the race they have all found clean air a nice little pocket to run in. As the man is Falling into the field here, hate bag on fresh soft, uh, fresh medium tyres, just six tenths back. But I think for especially this front duo, the strategy could end up being very good, starting outside the top ten or in one dollar's case in ninth place. Hope to see a stop in the sometime in the next three laps. Go on to soft compound tyres there, which they can take to the end of the race.
We do have a couple of cards that pitted early for new mediums, so they will have to go on to another set of soft before the end of this race. Mostly the cars from 10th down on our list. Yeah. Donald, Felix, Martin. And Rashado has actually had an incident coming through the loop. Just to have a front wheel intact, and it may have just been a spin trying to get the throttle down too early on the exit of turn four. So easy to do here, and that is a significant time loss. Drops to the very back of the field. Not a spy and currently on his recovery drive, only in P13. Although there are a couple of cars that will have to pit ahead. Meanwhile, Weltering has found himself all the way up in P7. I'm yeah, looking to attack just... Jazzy Binman here, who is on the old medium tyres. And he might try and get a run here down the Wellington Strait with the increased grip of the fresher tyres. All doing well. Only three tenths back and with DRS, this should be an easy pass. Flying down the inside, coming into Brooklands. And that is a fairly clean overtake by the look of it. is doing great. I, I can't imagine him going onto the podium today. Yeah, I mean, he showed fantastic pace after, you'd have to say an incident that aren't put the blame on him there. I mean, not a spy, just run ahead. And when there's no ghosting enabled, you really have to hope that you're given the time to react. Welchering wasn't able to react there and had to pop early. Chose a good strategy on the hard tyres and is now running them to the end. And in fact, if you look at the cars ahead, Corey and Wandle, they are only about 20 seconds up the road, if that. And the pit lane's longer than that here. They will, of course, have fresh soft compound tyres for the end of the race. But you'd expect that Welchering would hold the position through the pit stops. And so, would have P4 on track, and in this era of Formula 1, track position really is key. And if Welton can get past Kate back here, and he is on the back of him, that would be a net podium spot. One lap on, from the pass on Jazzy Binman, who has now pitted for soft compound tyres. And another and a medium tyre runner, but a fresh medium tyre runner. Donald not able Pester. to make the moves today. So we have Tawi and one goal in the lead, both on 15 lap old mediums. What do you think? When will they the pit? Do you think they're going I'd, both I'd have in to at think the same it'd time? be the end of this lap. Um, you then have 10 laps on fresh softs on low fuel load to really push and give everything. Not have to worry about tire weight. You see, Tawi does pull into the pits here. Wondol elects to follow, to him, yes. and Cruzo will be taking the race lead to round the final corners. Yeah, I mean, Jazzy Binman found himself P11 on soft tyres, two seconds back from Mill on old hards, and those fresh softs will be able to push so much. And so I could see a good point of position by the end of this race, but really it is Tori and Wondol who are looking for as much as they can find. Probably oh, coming out the pit lane is passed by Kate Bad and Weltering, as predicted. Will Aralak be able to make it past? Aralak has come out ahead. Tori and Wandol slot into P6 and P7 respectively. With a but good now they gap have a... the cars behind. Yes, yes, they have a good gap behind them. Dobson and, and Donald, both racing points. P8 and 9. In the points at least. Yeah, on, on the split strategies, of course. Donald is on older medium tyres after what seemed to be a pit stop malfunction in an attempt to serve a drive through. Yes. It's a pity for him on his debut race. It really is, and so he might may have to pit again before the end of this race. Go to soft, unless he has really hooded those mediums like his favourite grandma. <laughs> As we flip That'd back be... to the front. Cruzo and Nordi are still fighting pretty much side by side. This this feels like a re of what we saw last week at Singapore. These two locked in a battle. It, it didn't end well in a three-wide move at Singapore. 
Mill already got spun by it, Trisa picked up a penalty, and Mill ran off with the race win. This time Mill is nowhere to be seen, and it's just up to these two cars to see how it settles on track. Going through the opening corners, Nordy will once again have DRS coming down the Wellington Strait. But so far he's not been close enough to make any move stick. And once again, the good way back here, and I don't know if it's going to be possible. Just having to bide his time constantly. Cruzo has picked up another time penalty. We do know Nordy is carrying the 5 second penalty for pit lane. Cruzo had a 3 second time penalty only earlier, I think. Yeah, so there's, there's definitely 6 seconds at least on Cruzo there. Jock, if it would be possible if you actually check to see who has the more, more penalties here. See what the situation is, because I'm sure both drivers are well aware of what their penalty counts are and what the count is on the other car in the battle. And they'll be using that so Nordy will know if he has to make this move on track. He lost, he's going for it though. Coming down the hand of straight, tries to look down the inside, but he cannot get onside. Kuzo holds the line around the outside, hold on to the position. Nordy is so close now, gaining on the McLaren in front. And like he is not willing to wait until the end of this race. He wants the move done now. Me saving his overtake instead of Kuzo who birthed his ERS. Nordy seems to at least try to save a little bit. And here we go. We have another DRS zone. It's not necessarily as primed for an overtake and Nordy has not got a good run here. Falling back. One goal sets the fastest lap of the race so far on his fresh soft compound tires of 127.9. And you'd have to think one of the two soft runners in the top 10 is the favourite for the fastest lap point. Where it's your point in the championship battle, it can mean a lot to these drivers. But don't forget, we have uh, at least Donald and probably Felix who also go back on soft at the end of the race. Of course, and Felix has actually come into the pits now. Looking to put soft compound tyres on. Donald, I cannot imagine we will hold onto those beat. The end. Nordy gaining well, again, tries looking around the outside here, but he cannot pull out from behind Cruzo. Has to dip behind once again. He can see he's getting so close. But he's not able to make the move there. He knows. If you're in his seat here, you've got to be thinking, calculating, work out how to get that extra tenth or two down the hand of straight next time round because that really can be the difference. Formula 1 is it's a game of tents and that is what they're fighting for right now. As they pass this lap car free at Sophia line, they will both have DRS here I believe because of that and so Uzo gets a bit of a best knowing that Nori does not have a pace advantage down the Wellington straight. But that's not where Nori has looked at most dangerous. Nordy has looked dangerous through Madison Beckett's and then down the hander straight, went into Stowe. And, and right Mill now, there's not a favor. Sorry. No managed to pass on Donald on his super old medium tires. That's why they would surely will. If you see Donald falling back into the field, he'd have to make a stop for soft, but it could be for the fastest lap. Healing it. Like, like an, a savage from one of the top 10 runners. I wouldn't know what that's like. As Nordy is gaining down the hand straight, pulls out to the outside. Can he make the move stick? They go side by side through Stowe. Nordy holds the line. Cruzo will be alongside coming through Vale and manages to hold on to it around the outside and retakes the position as we cross the start finish line. There are six laps to go and it could not be closer between these front two cars. Incredible racing by these two. It really is, and they are they are fighting very cleanly. Yeah, they're just waiting for the run. And if they get it, they're running side by side and doing it so well through fast corners like that. And while we are watching, Weltering managed to go to his podium place for now. He passed kickback. 
Wow, that... Oh, fresh are mediums. That is very impressive from the Alpha Tauri there. What a recovery that has been. Still 10 seconds down the road from this battle. I don't... I think P3 may be the limit here, but... I'm sure he will not be disappointed with that at all, considering how this has gone. As Donald files into the pits, what may be the final pit stop of this race. That team to go onto the soft compound tyres to finish this one out. And maybe try and steal the fastest lap. But it may just be for consolation here. Nordy, it's tenth back. Not as close as he was the previous lap. A hold behind. But I mean, he saw how Cruzo was able to make him move through Vale. So maybe he's, he's not giving up. Rounding stone behind. I think he can find a gap. What happened this lap? There are now just five laps to go in this British Grand Prix. And there is a monumental battle for first place. Currently rounding the first sector. And even for P3, because Cakebag is not giving up, he sticks with Veltering. Wants this P3 back. Oh, absolutely. No, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Tori on those fresh softs might try and make a run to join this battle in the dying moments of this race. The same penalties that could prove pivotal. And we know that Welting will have had to push so hard to make those positions back and recover. Oh, and not a spy. Retired. As retired, looks like it was a bit of a spin coming through Stowe, possibly. And that has brought out the virtual safety car for the second time this race. It's that car. And I cannot see. I think not if I just hit the wall there. Yeah, it seems like. He's been a lot coming out of Stowe. Yeah, and I mean, he's. It, it, he hasn't looked particularly stable at any point in this race. Got that spin coming through Pops and then again an instant through Maggots and now Stowe has finished him off completely. Yeah. Great qualifying. Oh, absolutely super qualifying on Pulse. Super position. unlucky in the race for him. Yeah. Still under VSC conditions here. Surely we're going to be going green at any point now. This car's like they are speeding up. When they get going again, Nordy was hoping to stay within a second and keep hold of DRS here. A fair way back, Cape is actually very close to Weltering here. If you can get that jump, the VSC, on the car ahead, it can really help you out a lot. And Cape Bad, you have to think, would have the tyre advantage now. Yeah, just okay. like one goal, two places behind him. But he's struggling so much to pass Aerolag. Yeah, I mean, it's... It's one of them, would you rather have fresher tyres or softer tyres? You know, the, the battle ebbs and flows throughout a stint when you're on different tyre compounds. And so Kate Bud may have seen the best of those tyres now. And of course, well twin tyres have been going a long time. They won't be looking sharp, but... He may have settled into a rhythm on them. So they won't be changing very much over time. And so can work out how they feel and, and work around that, whereas the mediums drop off a little bit more quickly and so it's a little more, more difficult to adjust for them. As Nordy almost in Cruzo's gearbox coming around those final corners. And we are reaching closing stage of this race, just three laps to go. And I, I mean nothing has happened, but everything has happened. They have been uh, yeah, fighting <laughs> so much, and although it's it's still five tenths that it has been for the last twenty odd laps, and it has goal. been so close between the two. Nordy with DRS has a good run coming down the Wellington track. We haven't seen this very often, and moves down the inside coming through Brooklands. Can he hold onto it in Luffield? Cruzo will have the inside line, and Nordy does manage to make the move stick. But Cruzo is fighting back through Woodcut. Cannot hold on to it. I lose a little bit of traction there behind him. Yeah, of course. And Cruiser just has to slot in behind. Just three tenths back. And oh! 
Also, taking a little bit too much grass there. Coming to Madison Beckett, it won't be a pass here, but if Pierce can get a good run, he's close to Nordy. Go on, the hand is straight, but Cruiser has not had to drive through this sequence of corners in dirty air yet. This, so he doesn't have a great run. Nordy holds on to it. Now, of course, Nordy hasn't had the chance to run through those corners in clean air so far, but <laughs> it's a lot easier. It's a lot easier with clean air than it is with dirty air, and so I'm sure he loves that adjustment. Cruiser suffering now in the wake of that Haas, and with two laps to go in this race. The top two have what places? McDonald just said fast slap on his uh, fresh, soft tires. Yeah, the freshest tires on track. He won't help him because he is not into the point yet. Yeah, and I don't. It seems likely. And no, Nordy has spun out. Nordy spun out coming through turn four, trying to get the power down to fight back against Cruzo. And he's dropped way, way back. And Weltering Weltering. is making the move into P2. Looks like Nordy kickback. does have a full front win left, but those tyres will be toasty. And, I mean, he has to now make the moves on track. Weltering, Again. from nowhere, has moved up into P2. And Cruzo, who had been passed just a lap before at that very same corner, is now in prime position to walk this race home with just a lap to go. Nordy, he, he fought like 23 laps to, to went from Hunter to the Hunter, and now he spins out. He's yeah. back in P4, trying to overtake Kickback now. I mean, it's that corner is so difficult on traction. And when you know there is a McLaren breathing down your gearbox, waiting for any mistake to strike back after you spent so long trying to make that move. It can be so easy to just put the power down a little too quickly, but that's all it takes in a car like this to send you round and to throw you out of the battle. And so for the second time this race, Cruzo has been gifted the lead, and this time it may be permanently. He's 10 seconds up the road on the final lap, weltering on his ancient hard compound tyres that are swapped to earlier after the incident that first promoted Cruiser to the lead is lined up right behind. It has a good gap to cake bad here. If he and brings it home, I'm, I'm sure he will sleep well tonight. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I mean, Cruiser will be happy to take that win under any circumstances and, and Weltering will be ecstatic with the recovery that he's pulled off here. As they come through the second sector, half a lap to go in this British Grand Prix and have a look on P6, it's, it's so close right there, between one goal and error. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Hate Bad is still not dropping off the battle Weltering here. This is a battle for P2 here. And of course, Nordy, we're hoping that maybe they make a little bit of contact to let Nordy back into the podium places. I don't think they will be able to. I think both drivers want to keep it clean, and they do. There isn't a dive there. Aralat similarly is not close enough, and Cruzo takes the chequered flag and wins the British Grand Prix. Weltering round in the final corner. And Kate Bad half second behind. Pace. Weltering takes on P2. Kate Bad loses out on penalties to Nordi, who does manage to hold onto a podium spot. Only just. And Kate Bad actually falls down to P6 after penalties, with one goal and Aralat oh, wow. both being promoted. Tori comes home in P7. Found out a fantastic performance from AlphaTauri today. And Mill brings it home in the points as it sees so far. Yeah, after not being Impressive. able to set a lap in qualifying and also having an yeah. incident at the very start of this race. 24 He's lap old hard tyres, wins home 4 points. This bun broke his front wing, went into the pit on lap 1, hard tyres and brings it home on P8. Bring home a better result than Ferrari have seen all season. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true, but still a fantastic performance. They should Mill think there. about hiring. They should think about hiring Mill, I guess. <laughs> I, I mean, the, the Claire's working miracles in real life. Mill's working miracles in the game. Pits up drive for the day for his efforts. 
And I mean, what a performance there. But I think if I had to pick a driver of the day, I mean, who else? It has to be Weltering. Yeah, of course. Qualifying so high up, battling at the start of the race. And there's the podium. You see Weltering on, on the second step. Cruzo lifting the trophy with a race win. And of course, Nordi battling the whole race. Wins home P3. You may be disappointed with that, but it is still a strong result for Haas there. But yeah, what a recovery from Weltering. You have to say the incident that he ran into at Cops, you cannot blame on him at all. It was just an unfortunate circumstance. Pulls into the pits, puts on hard tyres, makes the best of it, and, and made to 18 points for Alpha Tauri there. What a performance. Donald does hold on to the fastest lap. That is worth a whopping zero points for wasting point. Opsin brings home the only point they straw this race. And Jazzy Binman, the other point finisher behind those front eight, rounded out by Mill. So your podium, Cruz Weltering and Nordy. Well deserved, all three of them. Oh, absolutely. I mean, a the, little bit. It's a pity for Kickback, because he fought so hard the entire race, but... Uh, I, I mean, the problem with fighting hard is that you really can pick up penalties for it if... You know, if you're... If you're pushing that hard, it just won't end well if, you, if you're taking advantage of track limits any way you can. And there are a, a few places, like Cops, where if you're pushing to the limit, you really can run wide and... It seems that it just cost him there a little bit. I'm, I'm very surprised that Weltering kept it clean in his march through the field and didn't lose out any of those positions on penalties. Definitely a strong showing there. So far, a great race, what do you say? Oh, absolutely. I, I mean, a lot of drama at, at the front of the field early on, and then... Just a, a brilliant battle to watch there between the McLaren and the Haas that went on but, for almost the entire race, really. Yeah. And then they served all the drama at the end again. Yeah, it, it's bookended. You had drama, 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 a very tense, very calculated battle, and then all the drama comes back and, you know, Prince has a grandstand ending. But for Weltering especially, Flying past on the penultimate lap for P2. Yeah, I was on the edge of my seat the entire race. Yeah, it was just so much tension in there. Fantastic. Now, of course, it is 10 past 9 UK time as we speak, and we've just finished up a race at Silverstone. But I'm going to pass you right over to the main channel where there is a PC Division 1 race. Just running to qualifying as we speak. So I'll hand you over to Tom Matt there. Thank you very much, Ohey. Yeah, thank you, Jock, for joining me. For will... being your guest today. Yeah, we will see you in a couple of weeks' time. Um, is it at um, Sanford? Two weeks here? I believe it is. It's honestly a fantastic it is, track yeah, to yeah, drive. Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah. yeah, I'm looking forward to that. So I'll see you in two weeks. But we, we, will, meet, we will meet tomorrow first on oh, Silverstone. Oh, on track. We will, but I won't, be, I won't <laughs> meet the viewers until two weeks' time. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. But I, I'll meet you all in the chat now in the PC Division 1 race. I'll see you there.